A months-long investigation has uncovered detailed evidence uh, of the massacre of dozens of civilians uh, in the Tigray uh, region of northern Ethiopia, overcoming the information blockade uh, around a pattern of atrocities that may have claimed thousands of civilian lives. Since November, the Ethiopian government has waged war in the Tigray region with assistance of troops from neighboring Eritrea. Access by journalists has been severely restricted, but in this exclusive CNN report, CNN has been able to speak with dozens of people who say they witnessed a massacre at the hands of invading Eritrean troops in a town in Tigray on November 30th last year, one of its holiest days. CNN senior international correspondent Nimel Bagger has the story for us. And Nima, you and your team have been doing amazing reporting on this one. We want to warn our viewers uh, what they are about to see, what they are about to hear is very disturbing. Tell our viewers what you've learned. Well, if this is the story of just one massacre in just one village, but it also tells the biggest story of the pain and the heartbreak reverberating across this region. Take a look at this. A bloody jacket, some rope used to tie the victims, shoes worn by a Sunday schoolboy. The haunting remnants of a brutal massacre in a village in northern Ethiopia's Tigray region. A massacre perpetrated by Eritrean soldiers on Ethiopian soil. 52 out of the 54 pictures you see here are victims whose identities have been verified by CNN. This is the village of Mariam Dengalat, where CNN's investigation uncovered the murder of dozens, possibly even more than 100 civilians. Witnesses tell CNN people were murdered here over three days of mayhem. With video and communication limited due to an Ethiopian government-imposed blackout on the region and fear of government retribution rife, CNN has had to illustrate witness testimony through animation and use of actors' voices to describe what happened in December last year. One eyewitness, Martha, not her real name, told CNN they were returning from morning church service. When they got home, they were confronted by Eritrean troops. They came to our house, then they told us to get out. There were a lot of soldiers outside, and they were saying, come out, come out, you bitch. We said, we are civilian, we are civilian, showing our IDs. They didn't ask any question. They just opened fire. To understand what happened here over the course of these three days, you need to understand what's been happening over the last few years in Ethiopia. Under the country's former rulers, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, Ethiopia waged hostilities with Eritrea for the TPLF's almost 30 years in power. Ethiopia's president, Abe Ahmed, won a Nobel Peace Prize for bringing all that to an end. <laughs> The Tigray region has always been distinct in culture and language, and its leadership is battling for autonomy from Ethiopia's government. Now the two former enemies stand accused of working together to crush Tigray's fight for autonomy. And civilians are being killed in what could be war crimes, and something the ousted Tigray leader described as acts of genocide. This video was secretly taken and smuggled out to CNN to avoid Ethiopian and Eritrean troops. It's footage of the graves that eyewitnesses described to CNN in harrowing testimony. Underneath the branches and sticks are the grave sites for the victims. Another eyewitness, Abraham, again not his real name, was supposed to help clean the church at Mariam Dengalat before the festival. Instead, he became a grave digger. They were all so young and they took them and killed them together in a field. Among those he buried were 24 Sunday school children. Abraham and others registered the kids' names as best they could. One by one, the shallow graves were uncovered, and parents came to identify their children. Some were so badly disfigured, they could only be identified by their clothing. This is not the only massacre perpetrated in Tigray. Using satellite images and interviews with witnesses, Amnesty was able to find evidence of at least one other separate massacre involving hundreds of civilians, believed to be carried out in another city days earlier. A day after the investigations by CNN and Amnesty International, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken said those responsible for them must be held accountable. Strong words.
But will words be enough when the crimes described bear all the hallmarks of a possible genocide? CNN has put the findings of its investigation to the Ethiopian and Eritrean governments and to the TPLF. In response to a U.S. statement, the Ethiopian government has said that it is fully committed to undertaking a thorough investigation of the alleged abuses, but it added it, it also regretted U.S.'s um, commentary on internal Ethiopian affairs. It also said that its forces were in the region as part of lawful operations. The TPLF told us that it did not have forces in Dengalat either before or after the massacre, and they're calling for a UN investigation into these findings. The Eritrean government did not respond to our request for comment, Wolf, but on Friday in response to Amnesty's, in, in, in response to Amnesty's investigation into the, that separate massacre, they said that their forces were not responsible. Wolf? Nima, as you've been reporting, uh, there's been widespread condemnation in the aftermath of our reporting, including renewed calls for investigation, uh, as you point out, from the Secretary of State, uh, Antony Blinken. Uh, what's been the response to all of that? Well, we were able to speak uh, exclusively to the leader of the Tigray region, uh, Debrecen Gabriel Michael, and he is calling what we have found a possible genocide. And he is making an independent investigation into our findings and Amnesty's findings a precondition for negotiations with the Ethiopian government and for peace mo moving forward. And at, for the time being, the Ethiopian government is rejecting that, Wolf. What is clear is that this is a real foreign policy test for the Biden administration, how to bring a peaceful resolution, how to bring justice to this desperate region it is such a big test. Nimal Bagger and her team doing amazing exclusive reporting for us. We're going to stay on top of this. Nima, thank you. Thank you so much for that.